typically in a uh, State of the Union address, the focus will be on domestic and economic questions. But for the arms control community, uh, they're going to see as useful as the president saying he wants to pursue further nuclear reduction with Russia. That was, I think, an important statement. And he made that statement uh, several days after some press reports uh, appeared that says the administration is about to come to conclusion on its nuclear posture review implementation study, and that the administration may, for example, take the main limit in the new Strategic Arms Reductions Treaty of 1,550 warheads and try to bring that down to, say, 1,000 to 1,100, which would be a logical next step. And also, uh, the reporting is that uh, the president might, for the first time, propose to the Russians that let's not negotiate limits just on deployed strategic warheads, but let's bring in reserve strategic weapons and also non-strategic or tactical weapons, which for the first time would mean that the United States and the Russians were talking about everything on the table. And I think that's also a logical step. Reportedly, the National Security Advisor, Tom Donlin, is going to go to Moscow sometime in the next couple of weeks. And I would anticipate that if he does, you know, sounding out the Russians as, as to where we could go on nuclear arms reductions would be a big part of that mission. So I think, you know, it's still too early to know how the Russians are going to react on this. What I'd recommended in, in the Big Bets memo was that the president proposed to the Russians that each side reduce the 1,550 limit in the New START Treaty that covered deployed strategic warheads, bring that down to 1,000, and then also negotiate a limit of 2,000 to 2,500 that would cover all the nuclear weapons on the American and Russian sides. So the, the, the numbers are a little bit different, but it does sound like the administration is going in that direction, and I think it would be a very positive move for a variety of reasons. If the United States, which together with Russia, controls something like 95 percent of the nuclear weapons in the world, can the United States, if it's not reducing, credibly ask other countries either not to build up if they're a nuclear weapon state, or to ask other countries not to acquire nuclear weapons? I think that's very hard. Whereas, on the other hand, if the United States is reducing its weapons, U.S. diplomacy is going to be empowered. Now, a decision by the United States and Russia to reduce their nuclear arms is not going to make the leadership in North Korea change its mind. But what it does, and it's very important, is it gives the United States the ability to persuade third countries to up the political pressure to impose greater sanctions. And I think if you've looked at the last three years, three years ago President Obama signed the New START Treaty, and in the past three years with that indication of American desire to reduce nuclear weapons, you've also seen in parallel readiness by countries in Europe and Asia to uh, apply much greater economic sanctions on Iran than we've been able to achieve in the past. And I think that's not a coincidence.